One of the most common cause of swallowing disorders is acid reflux. This occurs when the stomach acid moves up the esophagus into your throat, causing discomfort. Hi, my name is Dr. Buck Nguyen. I'm an ear, nose, and throat specialist at Eminent Health. Welcome to Ask the Doctor. Today, our topic is swallowing voice care. With me today is Tino Aceves. He's a, our speech swallowing specialist at Eminent Health. Thank you, Dr. Nguyen, for having me here today. I'm so excited to be here as part of the speech team, especially because this is Better Hearing and Speech Month. This is a time where we raise awareness about speech language cognition and swallowing disorders for our patients and the role of speech language pathologists in taking care of them. I want to bring community awareness of the full range of service for voice swallowing disorders that we provide here at Eminent Health. We are dedicated to helping patients who suffer from these disorders. We recognize that voice swallowing difficulties are hard to deal with personally and socially. So we work hard to help patients overcome these maladies through proper diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation. Voice disorders refer to a broad range of disorders that negatively affect patients' ability to speak, eat, or drink. These disorders affect people of all ages, all walks of life. Dysphagia refers to a difficult swallowing, feeling of difficulty passing food from the mouth to the stomach. The common symptoms of dysphagia include consistent coughing or choking when eating, food liquid pills sticking in the throat, excessive salivating or drooling, sensing a lump in your throat, pain when swallowing, developing recurrent pneumonia, aspirating. This is when food liquid or materials fall or suck into the lungs. See your doctors if you experience any of the following symptoms. One of the most common cause of swallowing disorders is acid reflux. This occurs when the stomach acid moves up the esophagus into your throat, causing discomfort. Other common causes include throat infection, age-related muscle weakness, scar tissue in the esophagus. Other underlying medical conditions can also cause dysphagia. The most common are stroke, thyroid disease, diabetes, dementia, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, vocal fold paralysis, tumor in the mouth, throat, or esophagus. Voice disorders when your vocal cords become inflamed, growth, develop growths, or become paralyzed. What are some common symptoms of vocal disorders? Change in clarity, pitch or loudness of voice, inability to complete da daily tasks or job duties because of voice change, pain when speaking, increased effort to speak, coughing without being sick, voice fatigue for prolonged use, strained or strangled voice. Professionals, teachers, singers, actors, or service duties have high demands for voice. Therefore, they have higher risk for voice problem. One of the most common cause of voice disorder is acute laryngitis. This is condition usually caused by a viral infection and it goes away after three weeks. Other common causes include age-related weakness, asthma, acid reflux, overuse of voice, benign vocal cord lesions like vocal cord polyps, nodules, cysts, vocal cord paralysis, throat cancer, smoking, Parkinson's disease, spasmodic dysphonia. Spasmodic dysphonia is a condition due to an involuntary spasm of muscle in your voice box. This causes a voice to break 
and leave you with a strain, a strangled voice. Voice problems can be an indication of something as simple as a viral laryngitis or serious as vocal cord cancer. Progressive hoarseness is something you should never be ignored. If you're experiencing persistent or progressive hoarseness, especially if you're a smoker, you should seek specialty care. We assess voice and swallowing problems first with the thorough head and neck exam. Based on patient symptoms, we may perform one of the following tests. A laryngoscopy is, a, is an endoscopic procedure where a flexible tube containing a light and camera is inserted through your nose and down to your throat. This procedure allows us to view structures in your throat and movement of your vocal cords. Video stroboscopy is similar to a laryngoscopy, but the camera used in this procedure has a flashing light to capture a slow motion view of your vocal folds. This procedure is indicated in evaluation of voice disorders that are associated with abnormal voice movement due to either vocal cord nodule, vocal cord paralysis, or vocal cord tremors. The video results are recorded and the recordings are used to evaluate your progress during the treatment of voice disorder. This is a live recording of st video stroboscopy. You can see the, the slow motion is being captured by the video. The vocal cord, the mucosa movement as they come together. If there are any kind of nodule or cysts, you would see a disruption in the mucosal wave. Video fluoroscopic swallowing study or modified barium swallowing study. In this study, the test uses x-ray and barium to view food moving through your throat. This test lets a speech language pathologist to see if, you, if food goes in your airway instead of your stomach, looking to see if aspiration is happening. This test also allows our speech pathologist to see what kind of food are safest for you to swallow and direct swallowing strategies to help you swallow better. Another very important procedure that our speech language pathologists use is fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing or FEES, F-E-E-S. This test can help assess if you are having any problems with the part of the process when food liquid passes through your throat. A fees used similar to a laryng laryngoscope, a flexible tube similar is passed through your nose and sits above the epiglottis for most of the viewing. Here your swallowing will be assessed with different textures and sizes of food and liquid. Your speech pathologists use food color to dye the food liquid and it's easy to view on the screen. This procedure also can determine if aspiration is happening. Treatment plans for swallowing disorders depend largely on the patient's diagnosis, although specific conditions may require more focused therapy. The following general treatment plans may include lifestyle dietary changes, medical management, which can be as simple as medication to treat your underlying acid reflux, and swallowing therapy. I'm going to have our speech pathologist, Tino, to discuss to you about our dysphagia therapy program. In swallowing therapy, we work to make eating safer. We can change the food you eat, how you eat, or we can do exercise to rehabilitate your swallow. We can use tools like neuromuscular electrical stimulation, which sends small electrical impulses to weak or paralyzed muscles. You can also complete programs like the McNeil Dysphagia Therapy Program. This uses swallowing as an exercise and food to progressively work and improve your swallow. Our team worked closely with you to understand your concerns and tailor your treatment plan to suit your needs.
and lifestyle. The majority of voice problems are not life-threatening and are easily treatable. Medical management may include medication to decrease swelling, inflammation in your vocal cords, microlaryngeal surgeries. This is a procedure to remove small lesion on your vocal cords such as nodules, polyps, or cysts. Vocal cord injections are used for unilateral vocal cord paralysis. In some cases, a prosthesis is inserted on the paralyzed vocal cord to push it toward the other vocal cord to improve your voice. Depend on the voice disorder, other non-surgical treatments are available. Here to talk about voice rehabilitations is Tino again. In voice therapy, we use exercises to retrain you how to use your voice. We also teach you strategies that can reduce the amount of work your voice needs. And we can train you how to generally take care of your throat and your vocal folds. So now that you know what we do, let's take a look at actual patient care. So our patient is a 60-year-old male. He has no prior medical history and he was admitted to our hospital for stroke. When he first came in, a speech-language pathologist saw him and found that he had dysphagia and he couldn't eat by mouth. Eventually, a tube was placed in his stomach. Dr. Nguyen was consulted and he found that the patient had a vocal fold paralysis. Over his 64-day stay, he had swallowing therapy and multiple fees procedures. He also had a voice evaluation and voice therapy. Before we go on, we'd just like you to know that we will be showing actual video clips of medical procedures. This is a fiber optic swallowing evaluation on the patient in a case study. This uh, fees was done two weeks after his stroke. This is our first uh, fees with the patient. As you can see, this is the laryngeal view. You see pulling secretions in the back of his throat. His left vocal cord is paralyzed and there's evidence of penetration and aspirations of secretion into the trachea. This is a follow-up phase on the same patient six weeks after intensive swallowing therapy. As you can see, the pulling of secretion in the back of his throat has disappeared. He's able to propel food into the esophagus very effectively and no evidence of aspirations or penetration. So if you think you need our services, here's what you have to do. Number one, make an appointment with your doctor and let them know of any of the symptoms we mentioned. Number two, get a prescription for a consult with an ENT or with a speech therapist and know that we are here for you. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to help more people find this important health information. Click the subscribe button and the notification bell for access and reminders to more Emanate Health videos.